Hello, I'm Vaughan and I'm doing a video for my channel Retro Guy 49 UK. I've got about 500 videos on it. It's really worth subscribing to it. One of the themes I like to include is uh, local history. This is the Atkinson building in Southport on Lord Street. Ahead of me it says exit to Cambridge Walks. And I want to show you the museum. Cards and gifts there. It isn't well signposted, this museum. What's this here? I'm right by the box office. That looks like jewellery that you can buy. That's the box office for the theatre. I'm going to go up these stairs now in a minute. Go up these stairs to get to the museum, and there's plenty of them. See, up there to the theatre, the studio, the bar, the exhibitions, and the museum. And I'm going to turn the camera off when I climb these stairs. Be back in a minute. You go up one flight of stairs. And there's more stairs to go up to get to the museum, but on this landing there are some nice pictures which we're going to have a look at now. Sailing boats. Step back on them. That's a nice one of a butterfly. Some abstract art. And everybody knows who this is. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. It's David Bowie. There's some nice uh, blues in this one. Step back a bit, get it all in. Let's see. The last couple here. This looks like somewhere in Scotland. Yes, Highland View, acrylic. That I think is the inside of the Atkinson Theatre. So I'll stop filming for the moment and go up the next flight of stairs. They've got a film on at the moment called Horrible Histories Rotten Royals 16th and 17th of August It's not happening just yet But you see the stairs in front of us That's the way to the theatre and to the museum So we'll go up there now So, when you get to this landing, you uh, go along here and turn left. Young, young curators, curators by design. Our fabulous young curators took part in the following summer sessions with Gemma Tynan, the Atkinson Exhibitions and Learning Officer and artist Dot Rogers. That's, that's nice. Lovely windows there, aren't they? You walk past those. There's some information about animals here. 
Who's been in your garden? Ah, yes, I've had rats in my garden. I haven't had rabbits. I've had squirrels down the road. I've seen a hedgehog for a long time. Welcome to the museum. 10 o'clock to 4 p.m. So there's no flash photography. Well, we're not going to do flash photography, are we? Sefton's earliest people, Lunt Meadows. Yes, I've been there. 8,000 year old settlement it is. Have a look at these lovely pictures. What's this one? Miles Barton and family round about 1783. Let's show that one again. I think that's one of the best things in this museum actually. There's a painting here of Donkeys on the beach. And who's this? This person is called Peter Hesketh Fleetwood. And there it tells you about him. Peter Hesketh took the family name of Fleetwood when he inherited the Rossall estate on the Fylde coast in 1824. He was very interested in agriculture and managed the estate himself. He was concerned with the plight of agricultural workers who had no jobs and with industrial workers who could not afford holidays. So, it's a bit hard to photograph that one I'm afraid. Now this one is a picture the first hotel in Southport. I'm afraid I'm having difficulty with that. The lights. Oh, it's there anyway if you want to see it. It's a, it's a picture of the first hotel that was at the end of Lord Street. Uh, just be 1790s, just before 1800. That's how old Southport is. What have we here? Racecourse. Says they're the mixed fortunes of entry racecourse. Oh, golf clubs here. There's a very famous golf course down the road, isn't there? Ryder Cup. Souvenir program. There's some stuff about golf. Of course, you know who that is. That is Red Room. Southport is also famous for its flower show. Oh, this is good, isn't it? Oh, that is good. That's the that's the beach. That's a while ago, I think. Oh, it's a bit dark in this corner. A couple of few stuffed beds. I must show you this. There's a big painting there. I think it's uh, 
That's the Waterloo Cup. I think it's uh, Foxhounds. If you press these, you hear some funny sounds. Has it stopped working? Oh, never mind that. You can hear the film in the background talking about the Grand National and other things. It's annoying. Well, it tells you here William Atkinson was a cotton manufacturer who owned a mill in Preston. <clears throat> he was a wealthy man and a major benefactor. Like many wealthy industrialists, he was keen to escape the foul air of the heavily polluted manufacturing towns. He and his wife frequently visited Southport so that she could take the air to help her poor health, staying at Claremont House, which was then a grand hotel on the promenade. In 1872, Atkinson sold his business and moved to Southport, where he bought Claremont House and made it his home. As well as funding a free public library and art gallery, he contributed to the building of a new infirmary, which was run as a charity for local patients. So, this place is called the Atkinson Museum. So that's why. A few Edwardian postcards there of uh, theatre stars. The Garrick Theatre. Garrick Theatre, that must have. That's closed. Gormont Colosseum Cinema. Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit too dark, that I think. I don't, don't know if that'll come out. Look at this. Dress yourself ready for an evening. I won't be putting that hat on now. No, I won't be fooling around like that. They trust you. They trust you here, don't they? Original oil painting by Fortunino Matania. Mat Matania. Can't say that. Oh, there is a nice one. Southport. It's called a charming resort. A charming winter resort. Morning parade. What have we here? Is this the main part of the museum? Oh, this is all stuff about the Second World War. Well, you can see... Uh, oh, they're not talking about Southport being damaged. They're talking about the 1941 Blitz in Bootle, which is down the road from here. Uh, stuff about gas masks there. Protection of your home against air raids. I love looking at old cars like these. How old must this car be? Early 1900s. By the early 1900s, more than a dozen car manufacturers were in business locally. Felix Hudless built the first car made in Southport. He inherited some money from his father and invested it in a small workshop where he completed his first prototype car in 1896. It had a vertical twin engine mounted at the front, which was unusual at the time. It also had a steering handle rather than a wheel. Yes, I don't know if I can photograph all this properly, but I, I would I advise you come here and have a look for yourself and I'm not going to read everything out. Egyptology collection. Now we want to have a look at the Egyptology. This is the Egypt section here. Quite dark in here, isn't it? Well, this is all lit up, so I'll have a look at this. Oh, 
I like this. Yes, yeah, so I like that. Wooden coffin lid from Thebes, modern day Luxor, late third, intermediate, early late period, 25th or earlier, 26th dynasty, around 700 to 650 BC. So this is a, this is a coffin. And it goes right down there like that. Like that. More things that are very, very old. But that's what museums are all about, isn't it? If you go to the World Museum in Liverpool, they have a very good Egyptology section there. This isn't bad at all though, is it? Some hieroglyphics there. Oh, let's have a look at this. Oh yes. Oh, nice uh, painting here. Must get this on camera. That's a lovely picture, this. Yes. Got a lifeboat on it, hasn't it? It tells you about the Mexico, it was a three-masted iron bark built in Sunderland in 1880 for Temperley and Company of London. She travelled to North America, China and New Zealand and was later sold to Ertling Gebruder of Hamburg who renamed her Mexico. It tells you there that the vessel was hit by a severe westerly gale And there was a disaster. What year was that? No, she sailed to the Falkland Islands before she was eventually lost in Scottish waters in 1890. Yes, 1880 that happened, yes. National Lifeboat Inst Institution. This tablet is a record of the long and faithful services in the cause of humanity of the late William Rockcliffe, who for upwards of 30 years commanded the rescue and Jesse Knowles lifeboats. Number of lives sail saved. There's a nice model of a lifeboat there. There's another one. That's here yeah, from the Mexico. Who will you be today? Oh, you can put those on. You can put those clothes on and be a Victorian lady, a lifeboat man, shrimper, lady racing driver, or the comic hero Dan Dare. Uh, take photographs. So dressed up like that. Here we have some uh, toys from the past. A car now. Oh look at that. There's an original box of a Meccano motor car constructor. Look at these original boxes. They must be quite rare, mustn't they? There's more uh, original boxes. 
as an instruction leaflet. Meccano Engineering for Boys. There's more there. And if I just step right back, this is a wonderful thing. It's a crane and it's been done in Meccano. It's so huge, it's hard to get, get it all in. Look at this uh, sign, it says Meccano Parts Docked. I don't know if you can actually see that. So, uh, oh, here's a um, section on Dan Dare and the Eagle. I'll read that out in a minute, but we'll just have a look at these here. Eagle comic. The idea to produce an exciting new comic for boys was the brainchild of Marcus Morris, an Oxford educational vicar with a parish in Southport. Frank Hampson was the creative genius who made that dream a reality. And it led to the, um, the Eagle comic. And, uh, I'm not going to read all that out. So it was Frank Hampson. The stories were written in 1950s took place in the future of the 1990s. They were long, complex and imaginative. Many featured the Mekon, who ruled over the Treens on Venus and was Dan Dare's arch enemy. The dialogue was snappy and reminiscent of a war film of the period. The illustrations were detailed and colourful. That tells you about Frank Hampson here, all the history of him. There's a Dan Dare jigsaw puzzle so I don't know if there's much else to see there's a film about um, motor racing ah, a couple of very nice uh, racing cars there oh, I think this uh, museum is very nice. It's good that they remember this uh, disaster of the Mexico lifeboat. So I think we'll stop there. Hope you enjoyed.